Hello and welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Crow. My pronouns are she, her, hers. This podcast is being recorded on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek Nation, home to the people of the three fires known as Ojibwe, Odawa, and Mississauga. Special thank you to the Chippewas of Nawash and Saugeen, the traditional keepers of this land. If you are new here and wondering who I am, I'm a Canadian yoga teacher, mom of three, entrepreneur, and forever student who loves to ask questions. That's why I'm really grateful that I get to do this podcast all the way to episode 345 here today. Because over the years, almost seven years now, I've been able to ask questions about yoga and running a business and all kinds of other topics around life. And I get to do this each and every week and talk to some fantastic people. And I just want to say I'm really grateful that you're here, not only today, but if you've listened to other episodes before today as well, so that we can learn together. I also work as the founder of Pelvic Health Professionals, a place where movement educators and healthcare professionals collaborate and learn the most up-to-date information about pelvic health. If you want to check that out, visit pelvichealthprofessionals.com. And I also want to say just a side note on this. If you are a yoga teacher, a lot of our listeners are, or a yoga practitioner, that's really a big focus inside of pelvic health professionals because I see so much in the world through the lens of like, how does this tie into yoga? Because I'm a yoga teacher. So if you want to see how yoga is connected to pelvic health, for sure, check out pelvichealthprofessionals.com. This podcast was made for you, dear yoga teacher, because I really understand how it feels to be out in the real world as a new yoga teacher, but then year after year as a yoga teacher. Things shift and change and you learn lots and there's always more to learn. And this podcast is a place where you can connect to other yoga teachers, ideas, and information. If you are a returning listener, I'm so glad that you came back and thank you so much for hanging out. Today's episode is powered by Offering Tree. I use and love this software in my own business because it automates everything from the bookings that we do for the podcast to payments when people sign up for things, Zoom links, reminders, and so much more. And we have a special podcast listener discount code for you over at offeringtree.com slash Shannon. Now, many of you know that I love to talk about niching down and specializing as a yoga teacher. But I also know that when I talk about this, it can feel like an overwhelming amount of planning and work goes into niching down. So today I want to share a quick story, actually a couple of stories, and then a baby step so that we can all, me included, try on a niche and see if it's a good fit. So very first is the story. Now, if you have ever connected with me on Instagram, if you haven't, I'm over at The Connected Yoga Teacher you will see that I post a lot of things about gardening. So this isn't with my work, this is my hobby. I'm really passionate about growing food, replacing lawns with gardens, and planting native plants to support the pollinators and many various critters that are out there in the yard. And in the last two days... I've had two people reach out. So one person reached out and asked me what she should do about her lawn and the leaves that are all over it right now from a tree that's in her yard. I don't want to go all into my like advice about lawns and leaves, but maybe do a quick Google search if you want to find out more about leaving the leaves. (laughs) And another person reached out to me and asked if she could come and visit me drive three hours and help me in the garden. Now, I want to just remind you that this is nothing to do with my business, but this is what happens when you keep talking about something. And that might be in your emails, your videos, your yoga classes, or for me, it's in my Instagram stories mostly. So people get to know you for whatever you're talking about. 
And then at some point, they often will ask questions about more, you know, think of just someone you follow online. You're like, oh, they're trying out this new thing. I see this thing on their stories and I want to ask them more about that thing. And sometimes people then connect you with other people who are interested in the same things you're talking about or with other people who maybe have questions. The exact same goes for yoga. You can tell people, hey, I'm a yoga teacher. And you generally won't really stand out unless you're the only yoga teacher in your community. Now, if you do want to stand out, you work on your niche or your specialty. And when I talk to yoga teachers and I talk to them about choosing a niche or a specialty, oftentimes they feel nervous that they're going to be stuck doing this forever or that they're going to somehow lose yoga students who aren't interested in this one thing. And there are a lot of other things that go on in people's brains when they go to do niche work. You can hear actually a full one-hour consultation call that I recently did with Sarah Karsten. That was back in episode 343. It was a couple weeks ago. Where even when you know the area that you want to specialize in, and maybe you're even teaching that, it can feel like a leap to change, let's say, the wording on your website or what you share online or how you write your emails. So I wanted you to have a baby step where we don't have to think about changing our website or changing any wording right now. The first part of this baby step is to think of one thing that you're really passionate about right now that's related to yoga or teaching yoga. And it might also be something that you'd like to learn more about. Generally it is. When we have this passion, we also usually have a curiosity. So just as an example, let's say that we choose how yoga can help with sleep or maybe yoga for your feet. If it's yoga for your feet, I want you to pause the podcast right now or go to the show notes at some point and write down the number 337 or just remember plantar fasciitis. So we did an episode with Diana, episode 337. Diana's a physio and a yoga teacher. She talked all about plantar fasciitis and it's a fantastic episode. That episode right there actually could be the fuel for your whole month if you're going to do like yoga for feet or if you were going to do yoga for plantar fasciitis. Okay, I want to clarify for this baby step, you do not have to choose something that you are the expert in and this isn't something that's going to be forever. So you can change your mind at any point and you don't have to be the expert. What I really want you to try is just to do this for a month. And you get to decide when does that month start. So it might be a calendar month. It might be the next calendar month. Or you can choose any random 30 days. Now you won't be telling anyone when this is starting. Well, you could tell like, your biz bestie, or you can tell me, or you can share it in the Connected Yoga Teacher Facebook group. If you're having the conversation of like, I'm going to start this month of this niche, but it's really important not to waste time explaining this part to your audience. Like you don't have to tell your audience, I'm going to be talking about this for the next month. They don't need to know that. That is not the important message for your audience. The important message is all about the niche topic that you choose. And on that note, please do not overthink this. Just choose one thing. Maybe it's whatever pops into your brain first because it's just for one month. Next, pick the niche that you're going to talk about. So don't jump ahead 40 steps right now and plan everything that you're going to post, say, share, write, or record. Let's not even think about how you're going to create the content or what the content's going to be. And let's not even think about what this will lead to at some point. This baby step is all about trying this on and doing this in a way that can be easy and fun. And we're just working our niche muscle. (laughs) So say you choose to talk about sleep for the whole month of November and how yoga can help with sleep. Every time you post something on social media or you write an email or you share a video or you teach a yoga class, how can you weave in one cool thing about sleep and yoga? 
Now, once you've chosen the thing, then go ahead. We can start to step forward in this. You might look up some facts about sleep. You might talk about how to deal with the time change coming up. You might share some left nostril breathing to do before bedtime. Keep this very simple. I don't want you to go into like there's a huge long study and I'm going to break it down. These are just snippets of one topic. And think of this as like you're wearing a seasonal jacket. So right now where we live, it's fall, it's getting cooler, the days are shorter, and I almost have to remind myself, don't forget a coat when I leave the house. And this year I bought a really fun kind of reddish color coat and it's very light and it's not going to serve me (laughs) when it gets to be snowy and cold here. And I want you to remember this when you're thinking about this niche baby step. I want it to be like a jacket that you might only get to wear for a month and you might only want to wear it for a month, but I want you to wear it everywhere (laughs) so that You know, in every photo, you're showing up in that jacket that people now think of that jacket or that color and it reminds them of you. And no, this is not about wearing the same jacket for a whole month. That's not the homework. But the same goes with talking about your niche just for this month. We want everyone around you to know that you're excited about this topic, that you're curious about it, that you're learning about it, that you're excited to also share it all month. Connected yoga teachers, I'm popping in here for a moment to tell you about something that's coming up. We are doing a live call with Offering Tree soon so that you can see some of the updates that they've just released and also so you can ask questions to Eddie, one of the co-founders. I'll put a link in the show notes to the live Q&A and yes, there will be a replay if you miss it. And if you register for the live Q&A, the replay will be sent to you. And I'm excited about this. I want to try, and it's been a while since I've done this, to go live all at once in our Facebook group, on our Facebook page, and on YouTube. If I can get all of the tech to work to make this happen, I think I can. And you can also access the replay in those places as well. And if you can attend live, then you can jump in, comment, and ask questions. This is happening live October the 12th, 2023. And again, I'll put the link in our show notes and I'll be sending out an email. So make sure you're on our email list. Go to theconnectedyogateacher.com to do that from our homepage. If you want your life to be easier with all things technology, Offering Tree can really help. It helps you when you want to create a website that's easy to use and update. It helps you to get your classes online in an organized library. You can take payments when students sign up for your offerings, and also it automates and simplifies Zoom links, email reminders, and time zones. All of this is available through Offering Tree. It is seriously the best all-in-one software that I know of, and it's the most reasonably priced. The best news is, is that we have a discount code for all podcast listeners. Visit OfferingTree.com slash Shannon to get that. Okay. Now I want to get back into this month of your niche and this little baby step. But before I kind of wrap things up here, I want to tell you about a niche idea that's rolling around in my brain and how it is super niche. And that's because I've done quite a bit of niche work and I still can always do more. So this thing that happened to me recently made me want to tell you the story and then tell you that if you've already done some niche work, you can still try on a month of your niche. Okay, so recently I got together with two high school friends and we were chatting and we got into this conversation about menopause and pelvic health. And you can only understand if you know me well, I'm really excited by this point and fully into the conversation because That's a real curiosity and passion of mine, and it has been for years. I feel like there's so much information that we're not told about the pelvic area, and it's a really important area of the body. So then one of the friends there says something like, well, pelvic health is just for women. And I am just about jumping off my seat at this point. (laughs) Not actually, but almost. 
wanting to assure everyone there that pelvic health is for every human that has a pelvis. We all have a pelvic floor and our basic pelvic anatomy is actually very similar. I was telling my friend about this, like some of us have more of an internal anatomy and some of us have more of an external anatomy, but we're more similar than we are different in this way. And my friend just looked really surprised by this. I could see her sitting there and thinking on it. And then I got thinking right away, wow, this is someone who knows me pretty well. We talk quite often. She follows me as a friend on Facebook. I don't know how often she's on Facebook. But basically I was thinking, wow, she doesn't know this and she's a close friend of mine. And so I was thinking I could talk about this one point for a whole month so that more people know and understand that pelvic health is not just for women or for people who were born with uterus. So I've been thinking about this. I've been wondering what would it feel like to have my niche to try on for a month as something as specific as this, how pelvic health is for everyone with a pelvis. And even though I say this quite often, I could talk about it more and I could set my goal to do that for a full month. Now, I hope this episode has been inspiring to you to think, okay, what could I talk about for a whole month? And it can be as simple as one point, just sort of over and over again. It doesn't have to be really complicated. Let me know if you have questions about this. You can leave me a voice message on our website if you go to the connectedyogateacher.com or you can post a question in the Facebook group if you just search the Connected Yoga Teacher Facebook group and make sure to tag me, especially if it's about this episode. And I really want to hear if you try this little bit of homework. If you try on this month of your niche, please tell me about it. You could also comment at the bottom of our show notes page as well if you wanted everyone to read an update about it or read what you're doing. That's over at the connectedyogateacher.com slash 345 for this episode. Huge shout out of thank you to our entire team over here, Suzanne Crunch and Sinead, for making the podcast possible, for making this episode happen. And thank you, dear listener, for being here. It really means a lot. I'm excited to hear about your niche work. I'm excited to hear your questions and how this serves you and what you're inspired to do. So let's definitely stay connected about this. And if you want to get together in person, that's happening online through pelvic health professionals. So we have some amazing calls coming up. There's one in October on diastasis recti. There's one in November on stress, the nervous system, and the pelvic floor. December is pelvic health and cancer. And then January is pelvic floor and how that's connected to the feet. If you want to join any of these calls, head on over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com to join. Oh, and also there's a yoga series that's still happening right now if you're listening to this episode when it goes out with Sarah Garden. It's all about yoga for endometriosis and pelvic pain. It's fantastic. We're getting amazing feedback from the people who are registered. And not to worry, there are replays. So if you're listening to this way in the future, there are replays still. Head on over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com And when you join the membership, you get access to that yoga series along with a couple others and all of the new stuff that we add into the library each and every month. Alrighty, Connected Yoga Teachers, you know the question that I'm ending the episode on. I want to know what will you be doing this week to stay connected to yourself, your yoga practice, and to your community so that you can share the yoga that lights you up.